Hey guys, what's up? JD from JD Tech TV here and the iPhone 10 or the iPhone X, which is what most people call it now. It's a little over halfway past its life cycle. You've seen it, you've probably used it. And if you haven't, you're probably feeling the echoes of it on your current device. But six months later after its release, it's time to look back at the device that set the trend for 2018 phones, how it's held up, and if I still think it's worth that thousand dollar price tag. And hey, I make videos every single week just like this one, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on so you don't miss the next video. First, let's discuss what I like about the phone, the design. I used an iPhone Plus version for the last few iterations of the phone, so I got used to its larger size. Wasn't a huge fan of it, but I got used to it. I liked the screen real estate, but it never really felt all that comfortable in my pocket, always noticed that it was there, and the most annoying thing about it is that it didn't fit in my car's cup holder. It's, it's an odd thing to complain about, but it mattered to me. But the iPhone X felt like a normal phone to me again. It had all the same screen real estate size as the Plus models, all in a smaller form factor, and that's a big win for me. But I think its main win overall is the hardware itself. I think it's absolutely superb. And yeah, I know, it'll probably go down in history as one of the world's slipperiest phones, as well as one of the most crackable phones out there. But doing things like putting a skin on it, like this dope marble one from Dbrand, or just throwing it in a case, which I tend to put mine in a clear case because I like to put skins on my phones, will make these issues go away. Plus, I haven't really experienced a lot of those micro scratches that people have been talking about on the phone quite yet, but I'm pretty diligent with my phones and taking them out of the case quite often and cleaning out any dust or particles that might get in there. Now, the camera on the iPhone 10, obviously pretty incredible. Everyone always says that the Google Pixel 2 is the reigning king supreme of smartphone cameras, and I can't say that I disagree, but the iPhone 10 is no joke either. It really excels with HDR photos, and it gives a color temperature that feels more vibrant and pleasant to me than the cooler tones of maybe something like a Samsung phone. Even its video is just as good, if not better, than a lot of DSLR cameras out there. In fact, a lot of my B-roll is captured using the iPhone X, so if any of you are looking to start a YouTube channel but you're just waiting on getting the right camera, but you have one of these in your pocket, you really don't have an excuse anymore. But like I said, the iPhone X is easily in the list of the top three best smartphone cameras ever, or at least for 2018, and in some scenarios I would argue that it is the best. I was watching one of Marquez's newest videos the other day, and I know the man doesn't need help when it comes to views, but I'll go ahead and put that video link up there for you to check out if you haven't seen it. But in that video, he did a blind camera test for five different cell phone cameras. So he did the OnePlus 6, the iPhone X, the Google Pixel 2, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, as well as the Huawei P20 Pro. He took a picture with each one with letters associated with an unknown phone. He took eight pictures with each phone, put them all side by side so you can see which one you like the best. You get to tally up the score and that way you can see which camera you like the best, removing all brand bias. It was actually it's actually a pretty genius way of doing it. And when I was watching the video, I expected to pick the Google Pixel 2 like, 80% of the time at least, but when the end of the video came and I tallied up the score, I actually picked the OnePlus 6 once, I picked the Google Pixel 2 three times, and I picked the iPhone X four times. Trust me, it shocked me too. Now, I don't know if that's more because I use the iPhone every day and I'm just used to taking photos with it, so those pictures look better to me subconsciously because that's what I'm used to seeing, or if I actually thought that they were technically better. And I'm willing to bet that it's the former and I'm okay with that. But the pictures that I picked the Pixel 2 on were, not surprisingly, portrait photos. And what they can do with their software is just completely unmatched when it comes to portrait mode. But the iPhone X has its perks as well. For example, its camera being able to change the light after the photo is taken, especially into these really dramatic studio lights, is definitely one of my favorite features of the phone next to the Animojis, of course. But talking about its camera, especially its front-facing camera, sort of brings me to some of the points that I am not quite so fond of with this phone. The first being the notch. Now, let me be clear, I don't hate the fact that the phone has a notch. I don't mind that most flagship phones have notches now. In a perfect world, would it not be there? Sure, but it's the state that we're in in 2018 with the technical limitations. It's just what we have to deal with, so it is what it is. I don't really find it very useful to complain the fact that there is a notch. However, what I do find more useful is complaining about the size of the notch. I mean, this is by far the widest notch on any smartphone out there, and not being able to see if my Bluetooth is connected or not, my AirPods, or even the battery percentage at a glance without having to swipe down, 
it, it, it's a problem and feels like a complete mismanagement of space. I really don't even notice the notch for the vast majority of the time, even when watching videos because I rarely watch it in full screen, not because of the notch, but because it chops off a little on the top and the bottom of the video. I do, however, appreciate creators who make their videos in the two to one aspect ratio to get that full edge to edge look, which even then, the notch doesn't bother me. And then there's the software. iOS 11 has been a complete disappointment when it comes to how many bugs and glitches it's been experiencing. Here's to hoping that iOS 12 fixes a lot of that stuff. And I understand that it's not specifically the hardware's fault. I mean, the iPhone 10 itself runs like a beast, no problem there. But the software is definitely holding it back from being one of the best smartphones for 2018. Additionally, the battery life has been somewhat of an issue. I tend to get pretty much the same battery life out of this as I did whenever I first opened it. I can go from about 4 a.m. to when I wake up and not have to charge it until around 8 p.m. 16 hours of battery life, that's pretty good. But that's for moderate use. That's for doing things like making phone calls, doing text messages, checking emails, checking Twitter, surfing the web, things like that that aren't really terribly intensive on the battery. But where I'm having the issue is for certain apps that are mildly intensive on the battery, like YouTube. As time goes on, it's cutting into that battery more and more. And yeah, I know the apps are mostly to blame for this, but I really thought that the iPhone 10 would handle this a lot better. The other thing worth noting is Face ID, and I, I like it. It's worked for me almost every single time, and even with having glasses. I actually like Face ID better than I like Touch ID because I'm just one of those few people that for whatever reason, the Touch ID never really recognized my fingerprints no matter how many times I re-registered it. The only time that I really miss Touch ID is whenever my phone is like laying on a flat table like this and I get a notification. I either have to angle it up towards my face or reach my face down over it to unlock it. And in those situations, more times than not, I just end up letting Face ID fail so I can enter my password. I just really wish that Apple would put something simple in their software, like a single tap to wake your phone and use Face ID, or a double tap to wake your phone and immediately enter the password. But perhaps in the next iPhone, they'll extend the angle in which the sensor can read your face, or at least point it down more, so whenever it's facing like this, it can see your face a lot easier, but I actually have a feeling that will happen for the next iPhone. But I gotta say that the iPhone 10 has held up pretty well over the course of its six month lifespan, and that's actually more rare than you might believe. Typically at six months, phones really start to show their age, or at least other phones have come out, or are rumored to have come out that are vastly improving on the technology of these previous phones, even at six months, but so far, that's yet to really happen. I just sort of feel like the iPhone 10 will become the new iPhone 6 to where people just got it and just held on to it for years and years because it worked fine. They never really had the need to upgrade. I mean, this was the first redesign that Apple's come out with in what seemed like forever and definitely set a trend for 2018 that we likely won't see companies moving on from for a few years. So I guess the question remains, is this still worth the thousand dollar starting price tag? And I would say that if you got it day one or any time pretty much before this video, then yeah, as long as you knew what you were getting yourself into, it's a premium phone. It's worth $1,000. And even though it has a few issues here and there, it's still a premium device and it's still better than a lot of the competition out there. But if you're looking to pick one of these up now, unless you need one right now, right this second, then I would actually suggest waiting another like five months or so for the iPhone 11. Maybe just wait until it's announced and see if the iPhone X's price comes down or see if there's a specific feature that comes out in the iPhone 11 that you just can't live without. I'm guessing just like everybody else that the iPhone 11 will have a couple different versions, have a version that's about this size and one that's a little bit bigger, an iPhone 11 plus version. So bigger phone, bigger screen. And if that's something that you're into, you might wanna wait. But overall, the experience as a whole using the iPhone 10 for this long has been a relatively positive one, and I would venture a guess that the majority of the public that has one of these, it's pretty much the same. But let me know what you think. Have you picked up an iPhone 10? If so, what are your experiences with it so far? And if you feel so inclined, go ahead and smash that like button on your way down to the comments. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you soon.